In the last episode, we fared and painted the ballast keel. Now, it's on to the four deadwood and the worm shoe. So Joe came back. We didn't scare him away last time. So last time we were working on flipping the lead keel and we got that up and over. So the next step is to work on the deadwood assembly. And this is the pattern for the four deadwood. And as you can see, we don't quite line up here, which is kind of to be expected considering it's our first time doing a casting and casting in any sorts is not total science, um, at least at our level. But this really isn't a big deal. Uh, we'll just change the angle on the nib a little bit here on the deadwood so that that fits in and then you can see the deadwood's a little bit higher than the ballast keel and that's not really a big deal either because we can use this bat in here and we'll then just end up fairing that in where it belongs and we'll just trim the very little bit off the top of that deadwood and it won't really make any difference to the boat there's also a lot going on here in terms of construction so you have the ballast keel at one end, and then at the other end of the deadwood is the beginning of the stem. So we have the forefoot, here's the pattern for that, that ends up getting bolted on here. And then the stem assembly ends up going off of that. You gotta remember all of this is upside down right now. <clears throat> so it's pretty imperative that <clears throat> we get this deadwood shaped properly so that all of these pieces can be joined and be strong and be smooth and fair at that very tip of the stem. And this is where being a rookie boat builder is a little challenging. If I had done this before and had a little more experience, I'd feel a lot more confident just cutting some wood and shaping it to size and knowing what's gonna fit. Um, but since I'm not that confident, what we're gonna do is spend some time today and sneak up on it. So we're gonna lift up the whole keel timber and ballast keel assembly so that we can actually put that forefoot in place. And we'll make a little bit of a pattern that's the tip of the stem. And then we can put that in place. And that way, when we spring that bat and then fare it in, we can make sure that it's really nice and smooth and that it'll flow nicely into the stem and that we don't have to make any alterations. The only place I wanna change anything is just this little bit on the deadwood. Um, and if we can get that to be smooth and fair there, we don't have to mess with anything on the stem, which would be good. So it gives you a bit of an idea of how we need to fare it in this way. We also need to make sure that we fare it in this way as well. So we want to make sure that we have nice sweeping curves and that the water is going to flow around the forefoot of the boat nice and gently. We want to make sure that we don't have any bulges sticking out or any real hollows. And that's where the batten really comes in. And in boat building, the saying is that the batten never lies. Sometimes the plans do, sometimes the lofted plans do. But when you actually put a batten to the wood, that's the final test and that's the thing that you truly are gonna stick your stakes and your money on. So today we're gonna work with the battens. We're gonna get all of this figured out, get everything drawn in really well. And once we're confident that we know the shape that we need to find, we'll start working on the timbers and finding that shape. But we don't wanna do that until we're really sure. This is a lot of, a lot of big good wood to mess up if we do. All right, so Joe gave me a hand and we got the pattern fit for the deadwoods. We did a little tribbing at the nib end there and got that to fit in. We pulled a lot of measurements off the lofting floor and we marked where the end of the uh, forefoot was going to be and where the end of the deadwood needed to be. We made a little bit of a pattern here to go on the end of the forefoot so we could get the curve and then we clamped the batten in place. And this gives us an idea of what that curvature from the ballast keel to the stem looks like up and over the forefoot, what the shape of the keel timber needs to be. And we also know exactly what shape the deadwood needs to be. So now we just need to figure out the half breadths of the deadwood and figure out its curve in that view. 
and then we'll be able to start selecting lumber, milling it, and gluing it up together for the deadwood. Uh, which, the milling part is actually a lot easier than this whole figuring. Uh, so we're almost done with that, and hopefully by the end of the day, we'll be working on joining up some timbers. With all the figuring done, Joe helped Steve run some large timbers through the planer. Now, it's on to getting them to the right shape for another glue up. So it's made up of three pieces. There's one solid bottom piece, and then the two top pieces. These will get glued together and glued to the bottom one. Once these are all glued up, I will shape the top and put in the worm shoe, and that'll cover up this seam as well, which would be great, and it will reduce the amount of glue lines that are open to the ocean. And then once the worm shoes fit tomorrow, we can bring this thing down to its final shape, which will be really exciting. And the ballast keel is kind of the first boat part that's done and forward piece of the deadwood will be the second. So this morning we're working on the forward deadwood. So with the iron keel, it's much longer and bigger than the lead. The lead's delineated by these blue lines here. So that's our lead keel. So in front of the lead keel is the deadwood. So it has to fit into the nib on the, dead, on the lead keel and go forward until the, where the keel timber gets cut to come up and meet the stem. So this is that chunk of timber that we're working on today. So the deadwood gets bolted here in front of the ballast keel and there will be a bolt that goes through the ballast keel nib, through the nib on the deadwood and all the way through the wood keel and there will be two bolts forward that go through the deadwood, through the wood keel and through the base of the forefoot and that will tie all of that together. Having this big chunk of deadwood bolted underneath the wood keel and the forefoot adds some strength to the boat but its real main function is to just smooth everything out in front of the ballast keel. So now that we know what the deadwood is, where it is on the boat, and how we're going to attach it, let's go over and start working on it and shaping it and see if we can find it inside that big chunk of timber we have. And we're going to have to stop working on the boat here and later this week because the sawmill's coming in and we're going to have to get that knocked out. So hopefully we can finish up this deadwood before the sawmill arrives so we don't have to stop in the middle of it. First step in getting the deadwood to fit is to cut out this nib end. So previously I put the pattern up here and took a bunch of measurements and marked out the nib end very carefully. And then I drew some lines that come down that go across the top of the deadwood. Uh, and those are where I'm going to run through with a skill saw and cut kerfs. And they'll go right down to the line, progressively deeper. And then we can take the chisel, the adds, the axe, the hand planes, the power plane, and bring all of that down, get it nice and smooth. And once we have nice crisp lines and we're down to them, we can slide it over and test fit it against the ballast keel. And then the final fitting is going to take a little bit of work, but hopefully after this first round, it'll be pretty close.
With the nib roughly cut out, it's now time to get precise and start fitting it to the ballast keel, which is much more fiddly work. By working back and forth, slowly taking down the high spots, Steve got a snug fit and it was on to working on fitting the worm shoe. The worm shoe is going to be a lamination of three oak boards, bent and glued to the curve of the deadwood. With the laminations only being an inch thick and the curve not being too severe, we glued and clamped them right in place using the deadwood as a strong back or form to glue against. Therefore, after finding and marking the fair curve which would lead the deadwood into the stem, we used dividers to subtract the thickness of the worm shoe before carving it out. In the meantime, the sawmill we rented from a friend arrived, and we paused on the deadwood for that. However, while milling some large oak, it became apparent that it just wasn't going to be powerful enough for the significant pile of lumber we had. As the mill wasn't working, it was time to pack things up and weigh in our options. Ultimately, that meant calling in our friend James at the J-Team Sawmilling. Check out his mill in action in the next video, along with finishing up the Deadwood and the Worm Shoe.